Welcome to video four in a series of introductory videos for SolidCam. This video's topic is face milling. So face milling is essentially just the removal of the material on the top of the part. Now that could be the top of bosses, that could be the overall top of the stock. Uh, it's essentially just a open pocket and taking your tool and just going across the very top of that and wiping out all the material. So let's take a look at how that done, how that works here. I'm just gonna right click, and go to add milling operation, face. And the geometry selection for uh, the face mill operation is in two modes. Either you can use your stock definition and use stock uh, base uh, boundary. Basically what this is gonna do is, if we look at my part over here on the right side, I've got my part and I've got an oversized stock. It's gonna look at what I defined as my stock and then just uh, use that as a geometry, just totally remove all that material. That is reliant on the stock definition and not this geometry that's here. This geometry that I created in video three, um, that's just based off of the stock definition as well. But this is literally looking at the updated stock. So if I do this operation somewhere down the line where I've removed all the other uh, outside material, then it's gonna just look at the updated stock and just go to the boundaries of the updated stock. So this is purely a recognition function that you'll see in some of the newer versions of SolidCam. This is also reliant on the stock being defined. So if you don't have the stock defined, you'll have to use this right here, which is part-based or geometry-based um, uh, selection. And this is, what uh, you'll probably see in uh, some of the other toolpaths where you're actually gonna choose the actual geometry. So let's do that. Let's go new geometry. And in the geometry selection for face mill, there's actually the three types, model, faces, and profile. And the differences between those are just the different types of geometries that are available to you inside SolidWorks and SolidCam. Under model based, if I click on define, I click on the solid itself. And then from there, it'll project the outside edges to the tool plane and then just machine to those edges. So because I chose that solid, it's flush with those edges there and there, and it's created this kind of rectangular uh, geometry here, including that corner there. So it just takes the, projection, the projected edges and just forms a rectangle around it. So that's basically model-based. If I go with faces, click define, it's the same sort of thing. If I were to click on that face there, it gets the outside edges of that face, and gives me the rectangular. The difference here though, is if I choose another face, let's say I choose this face and decline the original face. So now I have just that one face. It just gives me the outside edges of that face. So this is useful if you have differing top faces, let's say the top of different bosses or, or such, and you wanna just face them all together. You can choose the individual faces and then it'll just put this kind of boundary around the faces. And then finally is profile. Profile is very specific. Profile, if I say the outside edge of the part itself, if I just select that geometry there, it uses that geometry exactly. So it's actually going to face right to that tapered edge there. So it won't even bother with the corner. So this is if you needed to profile something, you need to face something with very specific edges. But since I have some stock, I'll use the recognition, only because I'd like to use as much associativity, as much recognition as possible, so that way when I shuffle toolpaths around, it's always looking at the updated stock and it's only machining what's there. It eliminates any air cuts, but also it could avoid collisions in that way too. If we go to tool, select, it'll bring up our tool table, which we covered in video two. And Right now, this is what's called the active tool library. It's currently empty. I can add tools as I go along. So for my face mill operation, if I click add milling tool, it's gonna let me know that I pretty much only have access to these types of tools. Uh, let's just go with a face mill. And then the tool picture pops up and you can see the dimensions as realized by that geometry. Um, and you can go through and you can define your face mill or your end mill, whatever tool you're using for your facing operation, you can define that here, similar to what we saw in video two. Um, also, what we saw in video two is if I don't want to go through the motions of doing that, I can just import from one of my tool library. In this case, I'll import from my face mills library, which comes with SolidCam. Uh, and I'll just use my, my first tool here, my two inch face mill. Okay, so we'll just use this tool here, which came predefined with all those items. I'll just click the green check mark. Under the data tab, I have control over my fees and speeds. Under coolant, I have control over my coolant options. So 
So similar to what we discussed in video two, you can see I have a red line or a green cross, indicating that I have the ability to do something like, let's say, MISP, but I do not have the ability to do through the tool. All I have to do is just check the box, and that engages that option. Under levels, I control how far this travels in the Z direction, in the tool vector direction. And we have some options here. If I don't want to look at the, the geometry and choose anything, I just want to rely on, again, associativity, I can say whatever I've defined as the top of my stock is where the toolpath will start, and whatever I've defined as the top of my target will be where it ends. And then that way, I don't have to worry about um, trying to find what these things are. That being said, if I just simply highlight that and click on, let's say, the top corner of my stock, I get a different type of associativity. I'm basically telling it to start from wherever that vertice, that point, is in space. So it's looking at the geometry, and it's tied into that vertice there. And I can do the same for the face step. I can say um, whatever face I want to stop at, let's say this face right here, we can see that it'll stop at, it'll start at that point and go down to that face. And that, that red coloring indicates associativity. So it's a different way to associate this. It could either start at that point and go down to that face, or I could say top of stock and top of target. Down here, I can say step down. So again, similar to what you see with the other toolpaths later in the series, you're basically gonna, you're gonna tell it, step through this Z level by a certain amount. And if the step down doesn't equally divide the depth, we can just check this box so that we get some equal steps. Let's go to technology. So under the technology section is where you control the actual movements of this tool in the X and Y plane. For face mill, we have four different options. We have hatch, contour, one pass, and spiral. Hatch, as soon as you choose it, the second tab shows you the parameters related to that. So in this case, hatch is a zigzag back and forth across the part in whatever direction I tell it here. So the absolute angle is a uh, number of degrees off of the X positive axis. So if I want this to go in this direction, I leave it at zero degrees. If I want it to go in this direction, I have to put 90 degrees. If I'm looking at my part and I'm not sure what angle to put it at, let's say this is an oddball angle, uh, oddball part, it's on a skew, um, maybe I don't know what angle to type in there. I can always click on automatic optimal angle, and then it'll just calculate what the longest zigzag would be along that part. But in this case, I know the long edge is the x-axis. I'll leave that at zero. Cutting direction, I can tell it to zigzag back and forth, or I can do one way, indicating that it'll actually do one pass, retract, retract right back to the beginning, and do the next pass. Whereas zigzag will keep whatever climb or conventional cut I'm looking for, but it'll go back and along the part, maybe like even like a serpentine. Cut order, side to side or side to middle. Side to side is from one side to the other, or side to middle. It'll just go from one side inwards and then flip over and do the other side going inwards. Extension. Because we're doing a zigzag style hatch pattern, we have a long and a cross controls. So a long is in the direction of the cut. I'll extend outside the part by, in this case, the default value is 10% of the tool diameter. In the across direction, I'm just leaving it at zero, but I can put that at 10% or, or anything I want, and it's just basically how far away from the part. It'll go in this direction, in the across direction. Because we're zigzagging back and forth, at the end here, unless we want to have that, that nice linear 90 degree turn there, I could just put on a fillet on those corners, and then control that fillet here, meaning it's a much smoother transition from one pass to the other. If I choose contour, Contour is simply just a offset from the outside edges of the, of, the, of the profile. In this case, we're just choosing the outside edge of the stock, which we know to be rectangular. So we're gonna get a rectangular, kind of a racetrack style pattern, traditional looking machining pattern towards the center of the part. Because there is no one direction, the extension this time is just gonna be one parameter, just 10%. So it's just gonna go 10% on the outside of the part. And we have the same corner control here, except now we could actually be doing either 90 degree turns or even smaller turns. So not only do we have fillet, we have loop and we have sharp. Loop actually just adds this little loop in here just to eliminate any cusps at the corner there. Or sharp just juts out, juts back in, and continues the tool path. If we switch it to one pass, 
This is in the case that the tool I'm using has such a large diameter that I could just do this in one pass across the part. So in this case, it'll find the mathematical center of the part in the direction I'm asking it to go, in this case, the optimal angle, and it'll just go in one pass. No step overs, just one pass, and you have, again, just one uh, value for the, for the extension, but of course, because this is one pass, this is just gonna be an across extension. And then lastly is spiral. There are no additional parameters for spiral because what it simply does is it starts from the outside and spirals its way in. So depending on the shape of your geometry, um, spiral might be good or it might kind of look a little weird because how do you really spiral um, an oddball shape? But in this case, I'm gonna stick with hatch and we'll leave the parameters as is. In the original technology tab, you have the generic uh, parameters. In this case, what applies to all four of these? We're gonna have an overlap. So in this case, how much you're gonna overlap with the previous pass of the tool, so that dimension right there, previous pass. We'll have an equal step over. Depth cutting type is one way or zigzag, meaning either we retract and then start again, or we just feed down from where we are and then just go back the way we came. And again, that's uh, simple explanatory by these bottom left corner images. Uh, toolpath reverse, if we generate the toolpath and we don't like the direction it goes, we just check that box and it'll go in the opposite direction. Complete Z level, you have the ability to choose multiple faces. So if you choose multiple faces, do you wanna do one face and then move on to the next one or do them all in one go? Maybe jumping over gaps. Depending on your toolpath, that might be preferable. And then face mill could be done in a roughing pass and then a finishing pass. So floor offset, we can leave behind 10 thou, and then we can do a final finishing pass that eliminates that last 10 thou. So again, depending on how much material you left behind, you can do it that way. And then under link, basically you can add in your lead in, lead out. Now, if your, extension, uh, if your extensions are off the part, and you are making sure with your zigzag you're off the part, you don't technically need a lead and lead out, but again, you have the option here to add it in. Bottom left corner, you have your save control. So if I just click save, what this will do is it will save the toolpath to the toolpath list, but it won't calculate it. This little black asterisk indicates that it hasn't been calculated yet. If I wanna calculate it as well as create it, I can click on save and calculate, which will actually calculate the toolpath. And as you can see there, there is our zigzag pattern. I have it set to optimal angle, and I guess it figured out that from that stock, that is the longer direction. But if I switch this to user defined, that'll be zero degrees off the X axis. You can see it goes in that direction. Save and calculate related operations is the fact that we're using recognition toolpaths. So if this is going to affect the stock in any way that needs to be known by a uh, toolpath that comes afterwards, then I can click on save related operations as well. And it'll not only calculate this operation, but calculate any operations that come after that require updates after I've changed the updated stock. Save and parallel calculate exit, save and pa parallel calculate copy. What we're referring to there is the fact that some of these toolpaths, some of the, maybe even the 3D toolpaths, they actually take longer to calculate. There's a lot more involved there, so they take a little longer to calculate. So what you can do with this is if you click on calculate in parallel, it'll actually take that calculation behind the scenes and allow you to continue doing work. You can add toolpaths, you can add sketches and such. The only thing you can't do when you're parallel calculating is actually affect the toolpath that is being calculated or any toolpath that will be affected by the updates by that calculation. Simulate, we'll see later in the videos, but basically simulation is the actual simulation of this toolpath. It is not a G-code simulation. What it is, is a internal uh, physical model representation simulation. So you'll actually see the tool zigzag back and forth. You can see the tool removing materials. There are many tips and tricks videos on our YouTube channel on simulation, so I've referred you to that. And if you wanted to G-code just this one toolpath while you're inside this window, you can click on G-code, and that'll just output the G-code of this toolpath. Any questions of this or anything else from Solo Cam, just give us a call at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. You can send us your parts or your questions via the ticket system at solocamsupport.com. And stay tuned for the rest of the videos on this YouTube channel and in this video series. Thanks for watching.